that a coin? It's going to be uh, a coin. And what do you use coins for? Use it to do heads or tails. Uh, so this is the outside of the coin. And then I put this pocket in here. So that way we can um, tabs. have tabs there to cut it out later. Uh, I made them curve just so to match the bit. We'll see if that, really good. never done this before. So this is how you learn. And the reason that they're on opposite sides is because I'm gonna oh, carve yeah. this and then when I flip it over, it'll be located right there. So uh, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. This is our first time doing this type of thing. And it's also the first time that we are doing aluminum because um, I was told it can do aluminum. Am I gonna do any research? No. Am I going to do small test things that do small, easy cuts to see if it even works? No. Are we just gonna throw it, everything at it? Yes. All right. So I really hope that the Carvera uh, can do it because if it can't, then I'm gonna look like an idiot. Good luck. Yep. All right, commence the throwing. <laughs> After a lot of configuring and figuring it out, now we are going to start cutting. We have five different tools we're using, six different tool paths. We will see how it goes. <laughs> this is uh, definitely the most complicated one yet. Oh yeah, I mean, that's how you learn, right? Let's try and do almost every procedure it offers. And I'm using Walker's empty little tool bit holder. It's actually kind of useful for when I'm doing it. I can just put it all in, like, I was looking at the tool. All right, it's the tool I'm using. I so, it um, it's actually meant I know, to, to, to be man. magnet mounted. Yeah. So that when it pulls over to the tool changer side. Well, I don't have the magnets in there yet. But I will. I just didn't know. And also that. we have the air compressor hooked up. This is supposed to be yeah. Do we want to hook up the vacuum or the air compressor? Well, you can't do both. Well, you can't do both at the same time, but the shoe would get in the way. Gotcha. So we got a lot of air right there on the... Look at this thing. It's pretty neat. It's just a little nozzle that you can turn. Oh, that's cool. And then it has this little uh, Lock. washer to up the pressure or lower the pressure. Yeah, so neat. They thought of everything. Yes. All right, that's it. Confirm. Uh, I'm actually going to close it for this, I think. It's going to be blowing shit everywhere. There's going to be a lot of very fine detail happening. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how it's going to work. Me neither. Like, a lot of very fine detail. Are you starting? Oh, yep. <laughs> Lead. Wait. Going. Oh my gosh, just doing all those tiny little dots yep. first. Oh, so that's what you were saying, a single contour and you let the shape of the bit define the, yeah. the shape of the... Right. Yeah, yeah so uh, a few different things. I don't know if you can see the image right now of what it's gonna look like. Uh, but all of those little dots at the end were so small that I couldn't select the inside like a pocket, I couldn't make it a pocket, so I had to do a contour, which means it's just gonna follow the that little line. So that's what it's doing right now. So that's the first tool. Now did you, how do you zero the Z? It, it does, does, does it, it automatically. It Is there a load sensor? A so you see that right corner? You see that oh. probe? But how does it know where the top of your material is? So the probe right here, uh -huh. it goes and it, does the tool sensor. Oh, there's a probe on the, the Yeah, carriage? so that's the first thing you do each time. Ah. So the oh, probe, you put that probe in, you put it in the spindle? Yeah. So then it goes over, 
and it finds the end of the probe. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to the top of your material. It has a laser, mm -hmm. so it shows you the outline of where it's gonna be, which is mm -hmm. great. And then it goes down and touches the material. So, so now it knows how much Z between the probe and your material. Correct. And, and then, then you can put any bit in it. Exactly, so yeah. every time I change a bit, it'll go touch, touch the tool sensor, Yeah. and now it, ready to go. That's cool. The MR1 has that, but it's not quite as smart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that actually does all the math for you. Exactly. Yeah. So the cool thing, I mean, this is crazy because this is like, I think I told you to do like 0.1 of a millimeter and look, that gets hitting. <laughs> oh my word, that so is after so this, fine. <laughs> after this whole thing finishes, I'm going to, you know, we're going to evaluate because then if we don't touch anything, I can go back and adjust the G-code each time to like, okay, let's go a little bit deeper on that side. Which makes it wider because of the right. chamfer bit. Yeah. So Why I, is it skipping every other one? That it's not full, I don't think. Maybe it'll just come back and do it? Yeah. Sometimes, like, you know, even with the laser, it'll just do parts randomly, like even like the plasma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it jumps around. Yeah. I haven't looked into if there's like a, an order or a strategy, however right. they call it. Yeah. Or I don't even I don't even remember if I did all those uniform. Who knows? Uh, look at that. Actually running the G code. Yeah. So one thing. Oh, wait, so, so uh, you know, we're learning this all in real time. But one thing that can make this faster, if I'm doing something like this, where I'm just going around and touching it, I can change the retract height to, right so now it's 15 millimeters. It could be four or something. <laughs> two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that so makes a lot of sense. Rather than going all the way back yeah. up. That would triple the speed. Right. You can pull it up. How do you get this? Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, it's This is the Corvera Air. The first time doing aluminum. So how deep is it going on these? I don't remember exactly. I can actually open it. I don't want to crash the computer. But... Fuck it. We ball. Well, I guess the negative, the maximum negative Z value on the when it's running. Oh, good point. Um, so I don't even need to open it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't even need that. Point two. Negative point two millimeters. Where do you see that? The Z. Oh. If yeah. the zero is the top of the plate. Yeah. Well, then this is where I can go through and change it all if I wanted to. So here's the one. That's oh wait, yeah, right those now. are uniform. I didn't fuck it up. So point two. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll probably come back and do some of these, but yeah. Well, and it it might have just been the way that the DXF was exported, like the of that oh, design, yeah. you know, like the how um, everything's layer based in yeah. Illustrator. So there's like a top to bottom order. Yeah. So I mean, this happens in laser cutting and plasma cutting. I don't care about it. Any of it. Flip it and rip it. Flip and rip it, and I'm gonna change the retract height because that was, that took 40 minutes. So I'm gonna change the retract heights to I think you can shave off five, at least five minutes. 
Yeah. So, let's find out. I am gonna uh, vacuum up all these chips, though. Yeah. Look at that. So I cut off all three tabs. I'm just gonna go grind that one. That is nice. Thank you, Carvera. Tails, never fails. This is awesome. Call it. Tails. Fuck. And I nailed it going like front to back. If you look at the side, you can barely tell where it was. No kidding. Wait, so did you just have it program in? I, I cut three of the tabs. Just by hand? No, oh. by the computer. And then the last tab, it's aluminum, so I just bent it out. And then I used the grinder to get it smooth. <laughs> and then I used a very fine sanding block to knock off the fuzzies. Make coins today, <laughs> and I'm so excited about it. So, how was your experiment? Uh, the experiment was good. So, each face took about a half an hour, but that's because I used five different bits when I really could have used three. But I wanted to try different ones to see what they did. Uh, but overall, I mean, it's killer, right? The hardest part is getting it to line up exactly when you flip it. So the first time I did it, nailed it, like straight on, like you can barely tell. The second one was offset just a, just in like the, the Y axis by like a millimeter, maybe one and a half. So you can see there's a slight slant. So I just went to the grinder and beveled it. But I mean, still the quality is, is killer. Um, I don't know, man, like it's, it's just so cool. Uh, I'm super excited. Like, I can't express enough how easy that machine is to use. The software is killer. Like, it's just so easy. Like, so you'll see in the beginning, uh, if you put this in there, of me struggling a lot to get the right uh, CNC path. But that's because what we were making was so fine in detail, if you can even pick that up, that the software was like, bit's too big, can't do it. Uh, so that was my bad. Um, and then as soon as I got scaled up right, it was just bing, bang, boom, boom. Okay, great, go cut it. Uh, so I don't know what I'm gonna do next, except for make more coins. <laughs> Jesus, come in on Monday, and there's just a mount, you're like smog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I am gonna become my own dragon horde. <laughs> Um, I don't know, like, uh... Yeah, what's next? Yeah. If you guys have ideas, comment them. I'm not gonna make them all. <laughs> Maybe any of them. But it's nice to hear, like, what you guys think would be interesting. Uh, uh, I personally, I'm a big board game guy, <laughs> so I might make some board game things. <laughs> and by maybe, I mean I will. Uh, yeah. But this is our first experiment of doing, like, a double-sided thing, and our first experiment with aluminum. And I don't know if you can tell, but uh, it went swimmingly. <laughs>